Hey y'all, thanks for stopping by. It's Infinite Enzo here, and today we are doing a really low effort video here. Um, I just felt like talking knives, and I didn't have any other reason to except for the fact that tomorrow I'm going to Smoky Mountain Knife Works and I'm going to buy a new knife. So, what I'm thinking is let's take a look at what Smoky Mountain Knife Works has in stock for cold steel. There's definitely going to be a lot of cool stuff here. One thing that's really cool is the Special Forces shovel, but I have like literally no need for that. Uh, but still pretty sweet. I eyeballed one of those. Also, one of the dudes in the show alone had one of these and he used the crap out of it. Really good publicity for Cold Steel on that one. But what I'm eyeballing here, let's take a look at the range boss real quick. I really like that flat dark earth option here. What I like about this too is it has the lines of the broken skull, I think it was. It looks a lot like the broken skull, which I think has been discontinued. So what we have here is 4034 stainless steel. I've not used 4034 before, but I've heard that it's it's a fine, um, decent stainless steel. I mean, it's better than say like HCR 13. Um, so kind of a good choice there. And what do we have? Zyx handle. So basically like Zytel, uh, you know, high impact plastic. <laughs> but it's a good looking knife. Um, go check out. Uh, I plugged them before. Um, Nathan's knives. He did a complete rearrangement of one of these range bosses, and it came out really cool. Worth checking out that video. Cool looking knife, the range boss. And $44.99, like, that's that's a great price. I also like that it has an unmarked clip. You don't see that all the time with Cold Steel. Okay, this is definitely one I'm going to be checking out, guys. The Chris Blade uh, Tie Light. I believe, yeah, this is the 4-inch one. I've heard some mixed reviews on this. I saw that, um, oh, what's his name? Uh, I guess the fellow that has a podcast, I'll put him up in the, in a little, um, bubble up here and you'll see his name. Um, he has a huge knife collection and he checked out one of these, uh, Chris Blades, uh, tie lights and he was a little bit unimpressed with the fit and finish, but God, that thing looks cool. Look at that Chris Blade, man. That looks awesome. And I think it works really well with this whole pattern here, this kind of switchblade style looking pattern almost. Uh, looks really cool. Those are coming in at 76 bucks. And then I feel like for Austin A steel at 76 bucks with that kind of a very cool design, I mean, that seems like a fair price to me. Of course, we have the uh, Talwar. Uh, this is one of those ones that I feel like came in, uh, man, a little higher than it should have. Um, of course, this was produced after Cold Steel was bought out by GSM. And they asked on social media, they asked uh, Cold Steel followers to take a vote on what knife they wanted to come back the most. Or it wasn't even a vote, it was just a call out. Just let us know what knife you want us to bring back from the dead. And far and away it was the Talwar. Now the problem here though is the price. I, now I know the original Talwar was not coming in at nearly $250. So that kind of sucks. Um, but you know. About five and a half inches of S35DN, that's hard to complain about. Like, that's a very nice size. Um, God, that thing is a ripper. Good gracious. The other thing that bummed me out was I was hoping to see the blue scales that the old school tall, tall wars had. I don't know if that was a limited run and that they were originally in black. I'm not sure about that. But regardless, I mean, it's a, it's a badass looking blade. The 250, man, that's a hard pill to swallow. Um, very similarly to how they brought back the Formax, they had the G10 version. For four hundred and twenty-five dollars, like I mean, I get it, man. Those G10 four maxes, they're worth some money for sure. But man, four twenty-five seemed awful steep to me for S35 VN and G10. Okay, continuing on here. Mini recon's cool. I'm not super interested. Um, the 8015 light. Let's talk about that real quick because I purchased an 8015 light a little while ago, and I was really impressed actually. Um, I've had three S35 8015s, and they all had just the slightest amount of vertical play and I think it has to do with just the design of the lock. You can see the way that the yoke rests on the blade. It, it can possibly lead to some play but I'll tell you right now I did get an 8015 light and it locks up like a bank vault. Like it is the strongest locking 8015 that I've ever experienced. There's absolutely no play. So I feel like the light kind of offered them a chance to perfect everything in its production and I was not a big fan of it when it first was announced because I just felt like, okay, originally the 8015 came close to 150 when it was released, and then 
when the light was released, okay, now we get to raise the price on the standard 8015. I felt like that was a bit un, uncalled for. Um, but, I mean, for the money, it's fine. Um, if you want an 8015, I would probably tell you to get the light and then go get yourself some scales from Scale Garden because it's, it's going to be a sweet knife after you do those mods. All right, so that's the 8015 light. That has Aus 10 steel, by the way. Um, everything that uh, Cold Steel's doing now is either going to be Aus 10 or S35, except for the budget stuff, which will be like 4034 or 4116. Um, my experience with the Aus 10 so far has been really good, so no complaints there. I would like to see a little bit more variety. Um, let's get that email out of the way. Okay. Moving on. Let's see here. Another range boss in OD Green. Here we go. There's another one I want to check out. The Gunsight Counterpoint. This is a limited run, but <laughs> it's, apparently it's not that popular because there's still a bunch of them out there. Uh, 110 bucks, I feel like, is a little bit steep. I think you can get these cheaper on eBay or Amazon or something like that, but it's worth, it's worth paying that premium at least to support a local knife store. So what we have here is Austin A once again, combo blade, serrations are, I'm not usually a serrations guy, but lately, I don't know man, they can come in handy I've found, and uh, combo blades are cool, like it's, I don't have any combo blades in my collection right now, so it might be worth checking out, but uh, the reviews are good, I read a few of them, um, one person stated that it should be a lot cheaper for what you're getting, but it's still a great knife, we have the triad lock of course, um, and one thing that I'm not a huge fan of is this backspacer just being freaking Grivery or Grivex or whatever you want to call it. kind of wish that was like stainless steel or aluminum or something. I don't mind the handles being Grivex, but that kind of bums me out. Because the fit and finish on Grivex I've found when you do a backspacer in Grivex, it never matches up well with the handles ever. You can actually see in the photo right there where there's a bit of a ridge. On top of that, um, and this was a complaint that I mentioned earlier about that uh, that uh, Chris tie light um, that you can see, you see right here, you see that lighter section, it's a little bit hard to see, but that's where the screws have been bored to go through the uh, backspacer, and it's just a little, I guess it's a little too close to the outer layer of grivery, but you can see where that bore is, which is kind of frustrating. Um, so yeah, I heard that same complaint on the, um, on the Chris tie light. So moving on, uh, good looking blade. W one thing I did want to highlight actually, let's, let's um, pull up the photos again. They may not have it in the photo, here we go. Right here we have this really cool uh, uh, blade, blade filing. That, look, that looks fantastic, kind of a snake pattern going on there. I do really like that a lot. Okay, moving on. Alrighty, what we got, what we got, what we got. There's your standard 8015 of course, coming in at 189, which is Ugh, that's a little rough. Um, I do think it's worth it. I still think it's worth it at 189 but boy, uh, I'm not happy about that price, I'll tell you that. If you're a diehard 8015 fan, 189 is fine. If you're just wanting to get an 8015 just to, just to try it out, definitely go with the 8015 Lite for the price. This spear is freaking cool. <laughs> Actually, considered for a minute. I was like, man, uh, the 80 bucks for, <laughs> for an SK-5 steel spear, good lord. That's kind of tempting, but what the hell would I do with a spear? Absolutely nothing. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Code 4. I've always wanted to check out a Code 4, and I never have. That's one of those knives that I think is an excellent um, value offer here. Uh, you're getting aluminum handles, S35 VN, and a beautiful blade shape, and a triad lock, all for under 100 Like, that's, that's a great deal. I'm, I'm glad they didn't change the pricing on that. SR1 Lite is a cool one. I've never pulled the trigger on one of these because they're in 8CR. If it was Aus 10, I probably would have one by now, but I'm not interested in getting an 8CR blade. As cool as it, as cool as it is, it's just, it bums me out that it's 8CR. But, you know, 55 bucks for that size of a knife with that build quality in 8CR, that's hard to complain about. If you're into the SR1, like, absolutely check that out. All right, moving forward. The Air Lite, that's another one I've kind of have had on the periphery, but I've never pulled the trigger on. It's designed to be more of an EDC option, and I know a lot of people that were big fans of it, but, you know, I tend to like my blades a little bit more on the big, chunky side, so I just have not pulled the trigger. Um, uh, Formax Scout, now y'all know, y'all may know, I don't know if I've talked about it. I have one of the DLT Trading Formax Scouts that have the green Grivex handles and the uh, DLC blade. 
I've actually pulled the trigger on one of these, but I got an excellent deal on it. And the reason is I'm going to do a handle swap because I prefer my blades uncoated. So I'm going to take the green handles off the DLT version and put it on the standard Formax Scout. Uh, and then I'll swap the black blade over here and we'll have a fully blacked out knife. It's going to be pretty cool. I'll do a video on that when that finally comes in. But the Formax Scout is freaking awesome, guys. I'll tell you right now, after owning one for a while, I've really enjoyed it. And also as a Denco fan, it's great to be able to have you know access to one of these at this price point of 108 bucks. You can get these at other, other places for quite a bit cheaper, um, which is what I did. Um, but yeah, just a fantastic knife. Such a cool design. The Grivex handles are not as nice as the G10, of course, but they're, they're not bad. Like they, they feel, they definitely feel plasticky, but they're very strong impact resistant. You don't have to worry about them like breaking down on you or anything. This thing can stand up to some serious abuse. Uh, so yeah, I'll let y'all know when I get mine in. Um, again, our blade steel is off 10A, of course. Uh, the blade is four inches, um, and it is about a six inch handle, so big old boy in the hand. It's actually, to be honest, for my small size hands, it's a little bit too big, but I don't care. It's, uh, it's too cool for me to be bothered by it, so. Moving on, Ranch Boss 2, I've actually all, I've looked at a few times, but I haven't bought it because it's built in China, and I'm just afraid of what that quality is going to look like. Uh, Spetsnaz Trench Shovel, that's another one of those things that are cool, and I kind of want to get it just as a novelty, but, you know. I don't know what I would do with it. Um, there's the black 8015, which is incredibly overpriced at 216 bucks. Not a fan of that. Uh, it looks good, just not a fan of that price point. Airlight Tanto, that's awesome. Uh, probably not going to get one, but 80 bucks is is great. I, that, I'm all about that. Uh, let's see. Here's one that I was also looking at because of the negative response that I had heard to the Chris Blade Tie Light. We have the Chris Blade Voyager. Uh, significantly more at 108, but that's still a great deal for five and a half inches of Aus 10A and that amazing blade shape. Looks really good in the paw, or uh, closed too. It looks awesome. Um, let's have a few more look. God, what do you think this thing is overall? This has got to be like, it's got to be like 11 inches or 12 inches overall. I wonder if they have that in the specs. 12 and a quarter overall. Good God almighty. That thing is a beast, and look, you can grip further in the back, and you've basically got a folding machete. Good gracious. Okay, moving on. That is the that is the Chris Blade Voyager. What a monster. Uh, here we have the Vaquero um, in a heavily serrated blade. Again, another ripper if you want something for <laughs> deterrence, we'll say. Uh, that would do the job. Moving on. I've always thought their Tantos are pretty neat, too. They're um, production fixed blade Tantos. I think they look really cool. Okay, moving on here. Let's see what else we got. More Code 4 options. The Tanto, if I were to get a Code 4, it would be the Tanto. Uh, nobody does Tantos as well as Cold Steel. They're like the master of that blade shape. Really well done, and, and, and they always handle the compound grind between the flat of the blade and the secondary flat at the tip. They handle that section really well. This thing's pretty awesome, the Damascus Sax. Again, not something I'm realistically gonna buy at $500, but boy, it looks like it's well-made. Uh, Crawford, not really interested in that. 8010 coming in at 176 these days, ah, you know. I still think it's worth it again, like the 8015. It's, it's worth it at 176, but uh, just to give you perspective, I got mine for 110 so it's crazy how much the price hikes have affected um, the bottom line. I like this Voyager a lot. That one's pretty sweet looking. Uh, let's keep going here. Thin Wolf, that's a cool knife. Never pulled the trigger on it. Uh, tough lights are always great. I don't have one. Ooh, let's look at this. The extra large Espada with those, what is that, like nickel silver bolsters? Oh my gosh. So this one comes in at 16 and three quarter inches overall. My word. Uh, so the blade is seven and a half inches long, S35VM. Let's see, black G10 handles. It doesn't say what the bolsters are. They're either gonna, I'm sure they're like either nickel silver or stainless steel. Uh, let's see if it says in the specs here. Nope, so I don't know. I'm, they're either gonna be one or the other. Uh, that is a beautiful knife. My goodness, I'll bet you too. And look, they even no, those are actually those are those are uh, locator pins. That looks fantastic. 
my word. Coming in at 457 bucks. <laughs> what a beast. I, I'll bet you the fit and finish on this is really, really, really good. Cold Steel tends to, when they charge a premium price like that, they make sure that the fit and finish stands up to what the, what the cost is. Man, pretty awesome. I think Advanced Knife Bro might have gotten one of those. I need, I'm behind on his videos. I need to go back and watch. Moving forward, the Ultimate Hunter. This is one that I'm considering. Where is... Yeah, here we go, the orange one. The reason I'm interested in this is because it is very much a Dimco design. Um, I, you know, y'all let me know if you know, because I was looking and I swear I saw a custom Dimco that had this exact uh, handle and blade shape. Because a lot of people said that it was, originally it was based off the 8010 before Cold Steel made their 8010. But I swear I saw a custom Denko that looked just like this somewhere. Uh, so I'm tempted to check one of these out. At 133, it's a, it's a little steep, but it's really not that bad. S35VN, 3.5 inches, some great G10, radius G10 handles. Really cool color in that bright hunter orange. And this one's uh, limited, um, so it's, it's a numbered, it's a, it's a serialized numbers here. Uh, pretty cool. Um, so I think for the money, that's pretty fantastic. It's a good deal. It's a Dimco design. Uh, so it's got all of the hallmarks of a great Dimco knife. So this is high up on my list to check out. Uh, the Cold Steel Ultimate Hunter. Right now, the Ultimate Hunter, the Chris Blade Tie Light, the Chris Blade Voyager. Um, those are the leading the pack for me right now. I do want to see one of these ballast songs. I, you know, thirteen fifty nine. Like that's hard to argue with. Let's take a closer look at that. We've got a Tonto blade on there, and the blade is actually made out of Grivex. So I think it would make a great trainer ballast song. That's the thing. I've always wanted to get a trainer because I, I do own the uh, Kershaw Lucha, um, and the tr and the trainer for like any well made ballast song is just as expensive as the actual knife, which is kind of. Uh, steers me away from buying a trainer because I'm always like, well, I could just buy an actual knife. Uh, but this is this would be, be a great trainer, I think, at $13.59. Obviously, it's going to be super light compared to a Lucha, which is kind of a downside. But hard to argue with that price. Uh, some decent reviews, I guess. Three and a half stars, eh. But still, again, $13.59. <laughs> if you don't want to cut something, then you're going to be just fine. And honestly, who knows how sharp that Grivex can get. It actually might be decently sharp out of the box but you wouldn't be able to return that edge too easily. Rajah 2, that is an awesome knife. Again, one I've thought about, but I've never pulled the trigger on. Spartan is a classic. Great knife. The Frenzy 2, glad that's still around. I've always loved the G10 handles on the Frenzy 2. Uh, moving forward. I think we're probably drawn to a close here on stuff that I wanted to check out. Last thing I wanted to look at, my friends is from Microtech. We're gonna check out some Ultratechs because good old Smoky Mountain Knife Works actually has quite a few Ultratechs on hand. So let's see here. Uh, there's a Marfioni, I guess custom one for freaking 3,000 bucks. Pretty awesome, but out of my price range. I like this one a lot, but I do think uh, for the price, it's a little bit steep. So the difference between this one is one of the handle slabs is actually G10 and not aluminum. From the G10 side, the presentation side, like that looks freaking fantastic. I love the look of that. Uh, on this side, it basically just looks like your standard bronze Ultratech. Uh, really badass looking blade, but at 416, it's about 100 bucks over the bronze Ultratech, which is the one I'm leaning to. Great looking knife though, man. Um, what is the blade seal on this one? M390, okay. They're all, I think they're usually either gonna be M390 or CTS204P. Ooh, let's look at the Hellhound real quick. Look at that beastly blade on this thing. That's cool. So definitely got some Mall Ninja vibes, but boy, if you're if you're wanting something that looks aggressive, you can't beat that. Again, kind of to me, this is really about deterrence. And you know what? Despite what some people say, who I think are kind of apologists, I think it's good to have knives that are a deterrent. I really do. Um, now, I personally have never, I've yet to have an issue where I needed that, but my father has, and at the time, he actually had a Protec Godfather, a Godson that I gave him, which, when you look at the Godson, it's a short blade, um, but for people that aren't knife people, anything that resembles a switchblade is going to be a deterrent, 
and he had a situation where somebody was threatening him with a taser of all things and he popped that godson out, popped the blade out and that really just diffused the whole situation and the other guy walked away. So don't listen to the people that are going to tell you that knives should not be used as deterrents. Now I'm not saying go and use a knife in a fight, uh, that's not something I'm saying. I do. I am saying though that somebody is trying to be a criminal and trying to take advantage of you uh, there's, there is some value in having a blade as a deterrent. Um, so that's the Microtech Ultratech Hellhound coming in at 510. Pretty beastly looking blade. Um, let's see here, Signature Series Ultratech 983. Here's the one that I'm currently most interested in. This is the Double Edge Bronze Ultratech. Great looking dagger blade. Uh, and it says right here, Ultratech uh, Double Edge. I really like, um, this is somewhat plain, all things considered. The handle color is just your standard black, but I do think the bronze and the black go really well together. So the blade is bronzed, the switch is bronzed, and all of the hardware is bronzed. So that black gold pattern, I think, is a very attractive look. I'm really excited to check these out in the store because I've never had the budget for one, and, and now I finally do, so I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be a tough draw between the Ultratex and the Cold Steels. Um, the other one I wanted to look at was this Molan Labe one. Um, definitely has that Sig Sauer vibe to it. Uh, very cool. It's got the Molan Labe inscribed on the blade. The Spartan helmet here on the side. Uh, now, I'm not sure. See, the other side, they don't put that laser engraving. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I almost would have preferred if it was just the Molan Labe logo on the blade and maybe a small Spartan helmet where the Microtech Talon usually sits instead of all of this I think is a bit much uh, and I don't like that it doesn't continue on to the other side it's kind of like well so we have half a helmet like it's kind of I don't know uh, I think it, it could have been a more interesting way to do that inscription so they put the claw the Talon here on the pocket clip which is fine but I'm just a fan of that classic look where they have the talon. Uh, let's pull one up here. Yeah, where they have the talon up kind of close to the uh, where the blade deploys from. So more than likely, I'm going to I'm gonna compa check it out and see how it handles. And it's actually cheaper than the bronze one, which is interesting to me. Uh, I'm going to see how it feels, how the switch feels compared to the standard bronze. We'll check it out. Um, and let's see, the only other one that I was interested in was this one right here the tactical standard. So this is in a tanto blade shape, which is fantastic. Uh, and the blade is a combination a color scheme of black and satin. It looks really good. I like that they have black on the fullers and black on the swedge. That looks fantastic. Um, and all the hardware has been blacked out. Switch has been blacked. So it's definitely got that tactical vibe to it. Um, so that's one I'm going to check out as well. Coming in at 309, I think that's a pretty good deal. CTS 204P on this one, as well as on the bronze one. Bronze one is coming in at 330. Of course, it's a double edge, so I don't know if that is why it costs more, or if it's the bronze hardware that makes it cost more, but certainly different aspects to it. And everything below here is sold out. So it's interesting to see all of the colored options are gone, <laughs> which is a bummer because I really like the green options i really like this red distressed one let's open it. oh man that's a looker that is a looker i'm hoping i might get to the store and maybe there's some that they didn't list on the website but i'm not counting on it god that thing looks good got that apocalyptic look to it um, so anyway let me know what you guys think um cold steel or microtech what do you think which way should i go um and i may i may try to get some video in the store i don't know what their policy is on that but let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching this dumb video. Um, thanks for sitting around and talking knives with me. And I will see you guys later.